Retreading old tires, often referred to as tire recapping, is the process of refurbishing worn tires by replacing the old tread with a new one. This process extends the useful life of a tire by reusing the tire body or casing, which is often still in good condition even after the tread is worn down. Welcome back to Lord Gizmo. Today, we're going to explore the amazing process of giving old tires a new lease of life. But before that, please don't forget to drop a like on this video and hit that subscribe button to join us for more adventures like this one. The first step in retreading is inspection. The old tire is thoroughly examined to determine if it's suitable for retreading. This stage is critical, as data suggests that over 50% of retread tire failures are attributable to deficiencies in this preliminary examination. An electrical inspection employs an electric pulse to detect any punctures or damages that may not be evident to the naked eye. Imperfections are then marked for later repair. Specialized symbols are used to mark any imperfections discovered that could potentially compromise tire integrity. Once a tire passes these inspection stages, it is prepped for buffing. The buffing process is designed to remove old tread rubber to create a clean, smooth surface that is conducive for the application of new tread material. Buffing also ensures the tire casing is uniform. Each tire is cataloged with a work order and barcoded for tracking as it moves through the retread process. Next, the tire is inflated to its normal running shape to ensure it is buffed to the correct profile and radius. While the tread is being buffed off, the operator may find hidden defects such as sharp rocks or glass embedded in the casing. These objects must be removed and the area must be repaired before moving on to the next step in the process. It's important to note that after buffing, the prepared surface must be kept clean. The tire should never touch the ground once it is buffed. The next step is tire repair. The operator removes any rusted steel cords which ensures such defects won't worsen. Trim back the steel cords to solid material. Once this is done, he uses a wire brush to do a final cleaning of the area. To perform a spot repair, the injury is leveled and filled with rope rubber. The repair is then vulcanized using a spot repair, vulcanized or curing chamber. Section repairs are performed if the casings, wires or fabric are damaged and the area involved exceeds 5 inches in diameter. If the injury is on the shoulder or sidewall of the casting, a section repair also may be required. Next is building. Building is the process of applying a pre-molded retread or new tread rubber to the buffed and prepared casing. The two main building machine types are the precursor and unit circle. The type of building process used will be determined by the tread that's being requested and the casing suitability. Let's talk about precursor building first. Precursor building is the most popular retread process because of the wide variety of tread designs and sizes that are available. Precursor means just what it says. The rubber that is applied to the casing has a tread design already covered in the tread that has been cured prior to being applied to the tire and is available in a variety of widths, designs, and compounds. The precursor builder mounts the casing on the machine and applies the tread. Some tread comes in a 33-foot long strip, so it must be cut to length. A piece of uncured rubber is then placed between the ends of the tread to form the splice. The splices are held with staples until curing takes place. Unique circle treads come in a seamless circle when applied to the casing. The splice this unique circle tread is stretched like a rubber band. The casing is then placed in the center of the tread, and the tread is released to fit around the casing of the tire. Next is curing during the curing process. We must create a pressure differential between the inside of the casing and the outside of the tread. The process used to accomplish this is called enveloping. An event pad is applied under the envelope to allow air to escape. The envelope is used to prevent chamber air pressure from migrating under the tread edges. The envelope is a rubber membrane that encompasses the outside of the tire from bead to bead. There are two common methods used to seal off the envelope at the bead areas on bias tires. Bag and rim components are required on radial tires. The shore lock system is more common. The Sherlock system allows for less curing time. 
The bag and rim system will work on radial casings, but it's more time-consuming than Sherlock. Reductions of 20 to 30% of cure time over conventional bag and rim curing can be expected. Since radial casings have minimal shrinkage, an adjustable ring is used to seal the envelope at the bead areas. These adjustable rings are called Sherlock's. Prior to placing the unit in the curing chamber, it's critical to check the envelope for leaks. This is done by applying a vacuum to the envelopes. The unit must hold a vacuum to help ensure proper pressure during the curing process and to help prevent reruns. As each particular retread is placed in the curing chamber and the exhaust hose is attached to the adapter of the envelope. If bag and rim equipment is used, a pressure hose is attached to the tube adapter to help provide pressure to the inside of the tire. The size of the chamber will determine the number of tires to be cured at one time. At the end of the curing time, the chamber will release pressure. The tires will be removed. The sure locks and envelopes will be removed from the tires and the tires will be sent to the last step of the process, final inspection and finish. While everyone's job is to inspect the casing at every station, final inspection is very important. The inspector must check for many items including separations, the quality of repairs, liner blisters, the splice if the retread is cured, dot information, and overall appearance. The Matthews G100 high pressure tester can be used to detect separations, possible casing fatigue, missed nail holes and tread misalignment. The high pressure tester allows the operator to visually inspect for conditions at different pressure levels. It's very important that the tire be inspected at each of the pressure levels. A condition that shows up on the lowest pressure level could cause a rupture at a higher level. The final finish is where we make the tire look new. The final finisher will trim vents, remove splice staples, buff and trim all spot repairs, and then apply black tire paint to the side walls of the newly retreaded tire. That ends our video on the amazing process of giving old tires a new lease of life. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. And remember to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay tuned for more awesome videos. Thanks for watching.